The Moonman TI-500, you might also see this branded online as Mahjong. It's a classic cigar-shaped fountain pen, very reminiscent of the Lamy 2000. And we'll do a direct comparison of those two models in just a minute. This specific pen is in the polished finish. There's also a matte finish that has brushing going the length of the pen. It has flat top and bottom finials. The bottom finial has a little brass insert. The top finial is separated from the cap by a single groove. The clip is a mirrored finish clip that's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. While it is spring-loaded, it is extremely stiff, but still functional. The bottom of the cap has Moonman laser engraved and nothing on the back. The cap pulls off to reveal a stainless steel semi-hooded nib engraved with Moonman. Right below that nib, we have a groove that holds the cap in place. Working our way up the section, there's a very small seam separating the section from the barrel. It's visible, but hardly noticeable in the hand. There are a bunch of small micro scratches. Those are witness marks from capping and uncapping. So something to expect. Working your way down the pen, it's kind of a classic bullet shaped body. We have a piston knob that is nicely concealed here giving it a twist, it becomes a little bit more visible. In the hand, the pen is very comfortable, maybe a little bit slick, but it has really nice heft and weight to it. Uh, it is made out of a titanium alloy. The cap does post deeply and securely. It transfers the weight a little bit further back and the center of gravity is now right around the crook of my hand. An extremely comfortable pen in the hand. In terms of size comparisons, here we have the Moonman TI-500. Next to it is a standard Pilot G2 rollerball pen and your typical Sharpie. Compared to the Lamy 2000, the Moonman is a little bit longer. The Lamy has a clip that is squared off on the back, so you can actuate the hinge just by pushing down. Moonman, on the other hand, decided to chamfer this back end, so you can't push down to actuate the hinge. The only way to open and close it is by pulling. Both pens pull to uncap. And both pens have semi-hooded nibs, though I would say that Lamy's is a little bit more hidden. The Lamy 2000, one issue that I called out on the video, which I'll link in the description, is that the clip seals both the nib and the section. And what that means is if any ink comes out on the nib, chances are it's gonna also stain the section. Moonman actually fixed this issue by introducing a little groove at the bottom of the nib. What this groove does is it engages onto a cap liner to seal off just the nib so the section stays dry. Working our way towards the back, the Lamy 2000 has these two ears that people have complained about, saying that they're uncomfortable when you're holding the pen. Moonman got rid of those and just has a single seam. Also, the section of the Moonman is a little bit more narrow than the Lamy 2000. The Lamy 2000 does have an ink window. It's not the most uh, visible in the world, but it is there, and Moonman omitted it altogether. In terms of posting, both pens are excellent posters, though consistently the Moonman is longer than the Lamy 2000. Okay, disassembling the Moonman TI-500, and don't worry, this was not a pen-related injury. Cap pulls off. I'm not going to disassemble this cap any further. There shouldn't be any need to for regular maintenance. The section unscrews. The first time I disassembled this pen, the section was pretty stuck. I soaked the pen in uh, warm soapy water and that loosened it up just fine. Now the nib and feed appear to be glued to this section, so I'm not gonna disassemble that any further. And then to take apart the piston mechanism, unscrew the piston knob. If you look closely, there are two flats there and there. 
Moonman hasn't released a tool to disassemble this yet, but I found if you take a pair of calipers, you can grab a hold of those two flats well enough to, um, to disassemble it. Okay, give it a little twist. Pretty soon the barrel will come right out. And that's it for the barrel. Now we have the piston mechanism. Give the knob a little twist. Pretty soon the piston rod will come right out. Continuing to unscrew. We have the knob. We have the threads and a brass um, key. At this point, you have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, we're going to grab our piston knob. We're going to grab our threads and our brass sleeve. Threads go right in the back. The piston knob screws onto the back of this. Now I found it's kind of challenging to get the piston rod um, lined up properly with this subassembly, but if you give the piston a turn, eventually you're gonna see the threads start to catch. There we go, now it's catching. Now whenever I turn it, the knob, the thread should turn with it. The piston rod is ready to be slid back on. There we go. Now twist it all the way down. And what we're looking for, perfect, is for this piston knob, the silver piece, to line up with this flange right here. That looks just about right. Sometimes this takes a couple times of um, twisting the knob and putting the piston rod back in to get it to fully seat, but that looks just about perfect. Now we're going to screw this whole unit back in. What I like to do is back it off just a little bit, take those calipers again, just to get a hold of the two flats, give it an extra twist to make sure that we are um, fully seated. Perfect. Section goes back on, and then the cap, and we're ready to ink up. Okay, inking up the Moonman TI-500. Today I'm using Diamine Midnight. It's a nice blue-black ink. We'll pull the cap off. Unscrew the piston knob. That brings the piston all the way to the bottom of the barrel. Submerge the pen into ink and slowly twist it back up. Since there's no ink window, you can't really tell how full of a fill you have. So what I like to do is bring the piston knob all the way down again and then screw it back up. That usually gives you a good full fill. We'll wipe off the extra ink. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Moon Man TI-500. If you look closely on the back of the feed, the back of the feed actually has an F for fine. So we're gonna call this nib fine. Our ink again.
they mine midnight this nib is a really nice writer it is truly a fine nib maybe in between a fine and a medium does not offer really any flex to say and in terms of reverse writing You can definitely do that with this pen. It makes a much thinner line, I would say an extra fine, and uh, the feed keeps up, but it does run a little bit dry. In terms of comparisons with the Lamy 2000, here's our Lamy. With an extra fine nib. You can see the strokes on this nib are quite a bit thicker than with the uh, Moon Man. Let's do a direct side by side. The ink and the Lamy is Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. So there you can see, I would say the Lamy actually comes between a medium and a broad, whereas the Moon Man is a true fine. So what do I think of the Moon Man TI-500? I think it's a very attractive pen. Um, I really like the finish. I'm not a huge fan of the clip in terms of the overall design because you can't hinge it from the back and that it is a fingerprint magnet with this mirrored finish. The pen is very ergonomic in the hand. I don't think it's overly flashy. I think most people wouldn't look twice at this and think that it's a fountain pen or something overly expensive, which it isn't compared to things like the Lamy 2000. I think that they definitely did improve on the Lamy 2000 by changing out the uh, the capping mechanism and adding this groove towards the bottom of the nib uh, that helps with both keeping the nib wet and also keeping the section dry. I do wish that they had an ink window on this pen, um, though I don't know quite how they would integrate that without really messing up the, the fluidity of this design. But overall, I do like this pen quite a bit. So that just leaves me to say Thank you for watching.